Welcome back, Section 5 Drawing Class. Uh, last week, we took our drawing from the two-value Noten statement that we made, and we looked at the two different shadow types and then their two subcategories. So those were form shadows and their core shadows, and cast shadows and their contact or occlusion shadows. And so it pushed our drawing a little bit further by focusing on the shadow side. Now we're going to look at the light side and finish off our drawing. So as we finish off areas, we want to think about how much detail and what level of finish we're applying to each one. Um, if we were to do each object, each area with the same amount of finish, that's going to you know, provide um, a sense of focus all around. And if you think about it, we're looking up at our reference and we're moving our eyes back like up and down, over, uh, when in general, that's not really how the human eye sees. If a human eye, if we look up there, you're going to take in one object as your center of focus. We can't focus on this and this at the same time, uh, when we, like a camera would. So as an artist, you could do that. You could highly render everything out, and that would be a hyper-realistic drawing, everything in focus all the time. Um, and that's one way of doing it. Or, as an artist, you can make a statement, and you get to choose the center of focus or the focal point for your drawing or painting. So that's done in a few ways. One, by the level of finish, by the amount of details you squeeze in. So you can see, like, I haven't put in any of the lines of the pages down here. I haven't squeezed any of those details in. So that automatically, it gives enough information to kind of read as a book, but it's very supportive to these other two or five objects up here. Um, the other thing to think about is value and value contrast. So looking back at our value scale, wherever you have these, the full range of values, and especially the darkest value bumped up against the lightest value, that's where your attention goes. So just kind of taking this whole page in, in one view, you know, our eye kind of gets sucked into right here, maybe somewhere, some of these secondarily, um, just because those are light and dark bumped up against each other. So that's going to be your strongest kind of attention grabber is the high contrast, high value contrast areas. Right now, as it stands, just from working on this, that has that shadow shape has seemed to got be become the darkest in my whole drawing, and it's bumped up against some of these lighter shapes, so it kind of pulls our attention there. That might not be what I want. I actually don't think I want that. And looking at my reference, it might have gotten a little dark in there. So at this point, in your own drawings, you should look up there, look at your drawing, um, bring it to a finish that has your light and shadow and then some of your sharper edges and softer edges defined. I like to do that throughout, so then everything stands on its own, um, it's recognizable. And then I like to go through and do a corrective process of um, pulling attention away from certain areas and pushing attention to the areas that I want to be the focus. So for my focus on this drawing, I think it's going to be the skull. So what I'm going to do is pull out some of these value contrasts up here. Um, maybe either, you can do this two ways, because it's a contrast, right? So it's light and dark, and that's very relative. Um, so there would be, I could have the option of lightening this, so that it's not as dark bumped up against some of these lights, or I could darken the lights, and that way that contrast also lessens. So same thing with these up here, if I wanted to lighten these, to maybe pull the attention away, I could do that, or I could darken some of these light shapes around it. That would also lessen the contrast. I think uh, it's going to be easiest to pull out some of the material I've put down, um, and that's where these kneaded erasers, sometimes not the most natural thing to use. You know, sometimes we're more used to like pen erasers, but these are great because it doesn't actually involve any or involve any rubbing. So you can just kind of come into these dark shapes without messing up your drawing at all and just lift out value. They're great for this. So see, I just, I didn't change the drawing at all, I just it pulled it up. Now, I might have to go in and soften that edge because I can't seem to get that edge out, but that's where these kneaded erasers really work beautifully. So now I'm pulling that contrast, pulling that focus off of these objects just a little bit and it kind of helps you know move the eye around the whole composition a little bit better and then I want to redirect the focus maybe down here by again lightening up maybe pulling off some of the tone that kind of got smeared across the light side of the skull and then maybe reinstating some of my darkest darks 
and that'll help bump the contrast or increase the contrast down here. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is the level of finish. So that kind of depends, if you're using a full value range, darkest to lightest that your materials can go, um, that's going to involve us pushing these half tones a little bit further. We have to take the same amount of care as we did in our shadow shapes by assigning them values like the shadow shape of 3.5 for all of the shadow shapes and then going in and doing the core shadow a little bit darker and the occlusion or contact shadow a little bit darker and kind of creating that hierarchy and that reflected light. We want to take that same care and apply it to the light side. So often they're called half tones, um, and that's kind of the general term for all of these guys. And you'll see just a lot of people kind of uh, finding their highlight and then shading out of there or coming, you know, from the dark, darkest part and kind of doing this all the way to there. And we can think a lot more logically about it. And it's a term called turning form is the fancy term for it. And we're, it's the most surefire way to create a real sense of volume. And it's applying kind of the light logic that we thought about for addressing the form shadows and the cast shadows um, to the light side as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and, we did this last time with that egg. I'll put the picture back up of the egg and then I'm just gonna clear all of this messy kind of scribbly half tone out. And I'll show you a more logical, systematic way we can take to this. And this is how you get a high level of finish um, and a high accurate render to a drawing, like you'd see in very classical cast drawings, where they look really um, photorealistic, but they also have like a sense of atmosphere and focus to them um, that you wouldn't see in like a photo. So we already took care of our shadow side and we determined like 3.5 for this area, um, maybe a four-ish for that. We said this was the deepest dark at five down here, gradating out. So this is based off of our setup, off of our reference, um, as much as it's based off of this, kind of following this prescribed philosophy to make this all make sense. So we want to identify our light source, just like we did to find the shadow shapes and how th this is created. Um, on the egg reference, we have the light coming from the front left. So we have the highlight. Now I'm marking this for your guys' benefit. You don't have to do this on your page because we don't want it to be circled like this, especially on very light objects, like white objects. Um, you don't want this. We might be able to get away with that tone just because the egg is off white. Um, but the idea here is that we identify the lightest value on our object, each object. So that's gonna be the highlight. And side note, the highlight does move um, it might not be always like, you can see like we get this kind of glow up here. That's probably going to be more indicative of where the light source is coming from. And then this is just depending on the light source, but then al also our relation to it. So as we move maybe around this way, that angle kind of like a pool table, like is going to bounce and travel around this form following our eyes a little bit. So the highlights can move a little bit where like the most brightest spot aside from the highlight will stay, remain the same. So indicate where we're going. We're kind of, the highlight's gonna be here. The Aside from the highlight, the brightest spot's gonna be here. I'm gonna pull it out now that we've identified that. And then start where you're confident. Looking at this, we squint, remember squint down we said, this is the shadow shape. I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. And we emphasize the core shadow, so I'm just gonna go back in there and re-emphasize that. A little bit more accurately. I kind of rushed it last time just to give you guys the theory of it. So darken that core shadow. And then you wanna think in, in bands of form. So it's, well, it's bands and it's also tiles. So we're gonna band across towards our lightest spot um, using tiles of value, okay? So it's like these little value squares. So it's, we're going from what we have assigned as the shadow all the way to here. So you can imagine it's gonna be this gradation 
like this. We want to bracket it just like a value scale and think about each value we put down, creating a band across this whole form. And you really want to do this, especially when you we do it on an egg and we, we oversimplify it or a sphere. Um, and then when we apply it to more complex things like faces, um, or skulls, we have, it's kind of like a lot of eggs, right? Just all multiple volumes and forms kind of crammed together. And then you kind of have to th really think about this tiling and seeing how the tiles merge one into another. But let's start on our simplest form. So I'd suggest before diving into your still life setup for this week, go back to your egg form, clean up your lights like I did, identify, um, and it doesn't have to be an egg, just whatever simple geometric form, paper towel roll you might have at home can practice with. Light objects are better because it shows the form. Not that dark objects don't have it, it's just a lot more subtle because you're working within a compressed value range. So we identify light and shadow and it's helpful I think to start kind of towards the core shadow because we've already identified that as being a value four. And then we're going to start making this band and roll out of our core shadow towards that lightest spot. So having a nice hard pencil is really helpful for this. And we're going to extend that band. So I'm going to go from the core and I'm going to kind of I'm looking at my egg this whole time. I just create this tile of value. You know, it's probably somewhere in the three and a half, three range. And then now as I get up here, it's starting to get a little bit lighter. So applying less pressure. Maybe correct that a little bit. There we go. As I come here, even less pressure. Hardly any at all. And now I've reached my highlight. So I've, I've bracketed this. I've thought about starting with my value four, working in my three and a half, three. Two and a half, two, one and a half, one, all the way to zero. And then remember, we have, even though this is um, still like one of the lightest parts of the egg, it's going to have a little value as it turns away from that highlight and that kind of center light bright spot. And you'll really, like, even though this is the brightest spot, you'll notice that half tone bumped up right here on this edge. And that's really important too. And that's kind of one of the benefits of lighting um, our objects or volumes from this three quarter, 45 degree angle kind of light direction. If you were to light it straight on from the side and we were standing here, it would cut your volume, the egg in half, and you'd have this shadow shape right here, a little bit of half tone right here. And then all of this would be blown out probably against the dark backdrop of the table. Um, and it just cuts it and it flattens our object. So by pulling the light source around 45 degrees, centering it here instead of here, we get this nice little half tone that helps roll the volume back away from us. It softens and it rolls away, kind of mimicking how we see uh, with our two eyes, our biocular vision, uh, the softened value edge right here. Okay, so that would be a band of form and I kind of tiled it out. I, I got these little in-between tones too. Remember, this is a simplified version. We can see like around 30 different variations or tiles of value. So there's a lot to be said and a lot we're missing in this simplified form. Um, and we want to do the same thing now, moving around. So I felt confident about that. Let's move up here. Look, again, coming out of that core value. So again, aiming for a value four always looking here and then looking back at my reference i notice this extends a little bit further maybe further than i did this time so now what i'm doing is i'm looking at this comparing it 
to what I'm putting down here, knowing that I'm aiming for this light spot, but I also have this to compare it to. And value and color is such a relative game that always comparing is the key to success, so getting a little bit more accurate the more I can fill this in. Okay, so now as I move up, maybe this value three and a half extends a little bit further than it did before. Before it gets into a three. We can continue that all the way until it turns into a two. And being surrounded by all this white is going to make this a little bit hard to judge at first, and the more bands of value we get in, the more easy it is to recognize where we need to go in and kind of do some touch-ups and corrections. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to add bands so we can you can watch this fill up. extended those bands of form or tiles uh, from the core shadow or what I chose as the shadow shape into the light shape towards that highlight you know starting from what I'd already designated as a 3.5 or 4 and then wrapping it towards that highlight so comparing it to what I had started with to where I was going and then the bands next to it and then I kind of jumped around as this starts to fill up everything becomes a little bit more accurate and more relative so you can make some better decisions uh, based on what you had and I was noticing that in general once this got filled with halftone I could push my shadow shapes a little bit darker I was kind of losing that contrast or that note and quality we had established before that gave it the strong uh, value pop and dimension so I went back and I darkened this trying to hold on to the deepest darks of the occlusion and the core as I went okay so a little bit tedious, but the theory is very sound, knowing that where light hits and then starts spilling around the form, it can't be as strong, it falls away. So it become, it diminishes in its power, uh, letting some of the shadow take back over and darkening in value as it reaches towards there. So we want to apply that now to our more complex objects. You might not have to take that exact same tile by tile, band by band approach, but the theory that you kind of ingrained by doing this exercise will follow with you every time you see a form. It kind of trains you to see value on form rather than just shading, right? Um, kind of arbitrarily. So I would really highly recommend setting up something super simple, either um, spherical in nature or even like a tube like this. You can see the gradation on here from you know your brightest bright. So you could establish the proportions of this create a shadow shape, tone this a uh, 3.5, um, and then go for like your deepest dark core shadow here, and then turn towards that highlight, right? So as you turn out your shadow shape back here, that three value uh, three extending to a value two is gonna be a lot longer. You know, your value three might go from here to here versus up here where it might go from there to there, okay? So it's, it's gaining that knowledge to create these bands. So try, try, try this on something really simple and geometric. We have our, like our little cast in the classroom, but at home you can use a ping pong ball, a paper towel roll, an egg, um, and then practice this turning form so you ingrain it. And then you can apply that knowledge of light falling and spilling uh, very systematically to your more complex objects. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna to go to the shadow edge of each of my objects, so right in here for my skull. And I'm gonna start turning form to its brightest spot. You have to take into account that these local tones on here, the brush holder and the skull aren't pure white, like the paper towel roll is or the very close to white egg. So the lightest spot of the object I'm aiming for is not going to be the white of the paper. There might be a highlight on there that's the white of the paper, but it might not be the area I'm aiming for or the center light. OK, 
Okay, so keep that in mind. It's good to identify your lightest spot and then go from here and aim towards that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now on my skull and my brush holder. Uh, the same idea can be applied to backgrounds. So just looking at my background here, we can see the brightest spot is arguably somewhere up here. It might be hitting back here, but then as it gets closer to this deep dark, that contrast might make this appear relatively lighter. Somewhere up in here, but it's definitely not that light down here, right? So that same idea of, you know, where am I, what value am I starting at? What am I aiming for? And then we can apply it. Um, it'd be a lot more arbitrary to start here and go dirt, 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 and then like soften it out with a thing, which I kind of did through here. It's a little bit less important because it's a background tone. So I'm not gonna, and it's not where I want the attention to be focused. I definitely want it to be there to support the setup and not have some a viewer look at this and say, oh, that's, oh, that's unfinished. So I'm gonna kind of keep that logic in mind, but I'm just gonna do it very quickly. And then I'll really slow down and start to do more of that turning forward down, turning form down here and also on here. Um, and then as I do that, making sure to keep in mind, what do I want my focal point to be? Do I want it to be the skull, where I might really push that full value range to get that value contrast, value five through one and zero. And then in here, where I maybe don't want this to be quite the same center or the same amount of focus, reducing that. So this might be, according to my reference, um, a value five, but if I don't want it to compete with what's down here, maybe I'll bump this to an, a four and a half. So I have that kind of creative license to mute this down a little bit, make it a value four and a half. I could even darken up this highlight from a, you know, this is very shiny, so it's almost the white of the paper. I could add a little bit tone on that just so that further reduces the contrast. That way I save full value range, darkest darks and lightest lights for down in here. And then maybe up here, I'm using more of a value range that's in here, right? So now the whole the contrast between this and this aren't anywhere close or present up in here as they are down here. Okay, so I'm gonna do that next. You could keep pushing this for indefinitely, uh, weeks and weeks, but I hope this showed the main points I was trying to get across. One, that to work on the light side, jumping out of the shadow side, now focusing on the light side, we really want to keep in mind the light source, where it's hitting first on each object, and then how the halftones are going to spill around towards the shadow shape. So knowing where the lightest spot's going to be, and then I like to start in the shadow shape or from the shadow shape, knowing what value I'm starting at, knowing where I'm going, and then trying to look at my reference or my uh, like actual life setup and try and match that every step of the way, each tile at a time. So darkening, 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 um, making a nice logical progression. And then you can see I added a little bit of half tone on the sides of my objects, just to help roll them back into space, soften the edges a little bit. Um, it's as much additive as subtractive, try to pull out some of the lights down here on the book. And then wherever I could, just turning line into shape, trying to go back here and like darken right up to that edge to get rid of that line, same thing with those. And I could, go, I could push this a little bit further. And then the idea of really pushing the whole value range of contrast, lightest light and darkest dark, in your area of focus, that plus additional smaller shapes and details is really going to drive the viewer's attention and subduing everything else. Maybe pulling out details, I darken my lights a little bit, lighten my darks just so the value range was more from here to here rather than the deepest darks and lightest lights. And like I said, you could keep going on this, but this is just a training exercise to help us, um, you know, practice our handling of materials, practice our observational skills learn about how form works on objects, uh, sh cast shadow, form shadow types, and then uh, what it takes to make that actual like three-dimensional depth on a 2D surface. So that way, when we get into like product designing, or if I had to draw something without a reference or a setup in front of me, I've kind of got the basics down.
All right, hope that helps.